Good morning to you and a very happy Christmas from the parents, the teachers and the children of St. John Fisher's School in Harrogate in Yorkshire. Today we're celebrating the birthday of the Son of God in a family setting because after all Christmas is a family occasion. It's the day when God entered our lives in a very special way through the birth of his Son. And that's really what we're celebrating today, Christ's birthday. So let's begin with a carol, Christ was born on Christmas Day. The mystery of Christmas is summed up for us in this poem by John Betjeman. Provincial public houses blaze and corporation tramcars clang on lighted tenements I gaze where paper decorations hang and bunting in the red town hall says Merry Christmas to you all and London shops on Christmas Eve are strung with silver bells and flowers as hurrying clerks the city leave to pigeon-haunted classic towers and marbled clouds go scudding by the many steepled London sky and girls in slacks remember dad and oafish louts remember mum and sleepless children's hearts are glad and Christmas morning bells say come even to shining ones who dwell safe in the Dorchester Hotel. And is it true, and is it true, this most tremendous tale of all, seen in a stained glass window's hue, a baby in an ox's stall, the maker of the stars and sea become a child on earth to me? And is it true, for if it is, no loving fingers tying strings around those tissued fripperies, the sweet and silly Christmas things, bar salts and inexpensive scent, and hideous tie so kindly meant. No love that in a family dwells, no caroling in frosty air, nor all the steeple shaking bells can with this single truth compare, that God was man in Palestine and lives today in bread and wine. Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The peace of the Lord Jesus be with you always. And also with you. To prepare ourselves in this Mass for this great feast, we confess to God and to each other our sins. And as a priest, I confess that I have not given myself as completely as I could to people, and have also neglected personal prayer. Lord, thank you for the wonderful family you have given me and especially for the love between us. I am sorry that sometimes I forget other girls who are not as lucky as I am. I am one of five children, and I have not been as kind to my parents as I might have been. For the times I have hurt them, I am sorry. Lord, I am the mother of a very happy family. I have never known tragedy at Christmas. Forgive me for taking my happiness for granted and ignoring those less fortunate. Dear Lord, compared with many, I suppose I might be considered a wealthy man. I can certainly provide generously for my family, 
I'm therefore sorry that I so easily forget those who live each day in conditions of poverty. on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Glory be to God on high. Christmas time and all that it means to us. We thank you for giving us your only Son to lead us back to you. Grant that when he comes to us this Christmas time, he may enter into our hearts and be with us always. This prayer we make through Jesus Christ, your only Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. For thousands of years, the Jews had been waiting for the birth of their king promised by God. He was the person who would free them from their slavery and lead them into a new life of peace and happiness. The first reading is from Isaiah and it's typical of the Jewish way of life. It brings out the idea of waiting for joyful news and the reader is Leo Gannon, headmaster of St. John Fisher School. How beautiful upon the mountains are the feet of him who bring glad tidings announcing peace, 
bearing good news and announcing salvation and saying to Zion, your God is king. Hark, your watchmen raise a cry. Together they shout for joy, for they see directly before their eyes the Lord restoring Zion. Break out together in song, O ruins of Jerusalem, for the Lord comforts his people. He redeems Jerusalem. The Lord has bared his arm in the sight of all the nations. And all the ends of the earth will see the salvation of our God. This is the word of the Lord. second reading tells us that God's love for us is perfectly revealed in his only son. Christ is one with us in his human nature, so that his birth is really also the birth of all Christians. The reader is Deborah Thackeray, who is a pupil at St. John Fisher School. A reading from the letter to the Hebrews. At various times in the past and in various different ways, God spoke to our ancestors through the prophets. In our own time, he has spoken to us through his Son, the Son that he has appointed to inherit everything, and through whom he made everything there is. He is the radiant light of God's glory and the perfect copy of his nature, sustaining the universe by his powerful command. Now that he has destroyed the defilement of sin, he has gone to take his place in heaven at the right hand of divine majesty. So he is now as far above the angels as the title which he has inherited is higher than their own name. God has never said to any angel, You are my son. Today I have become your father. Or, I will be a father to him and he a son to me. Again, when he brings the firstborn into the world, he says, let all the angels of God worship him. This is the word of the Lord.
from today's Mass is surely one of the most beautiful of readings in all the scriptures. This is the one in which we see Christ bringing light to a darkened world. The children of the school will mine the deep and very symbolic message from this passage. In the beginning was the Word. The Word was with God and the Word was God. He was with God in the beginning. Through him all things came to be. Not one thing had its being but through him. All that came to be had life in him and that life was the light of men a light that shines in the dark a light that darkness could not overpower a man came sent by God his name was John he came as a witness, as a witness to speak for the light, so that everyone might believe through him. He was not the light, only a witness to speak for the light. The Word was the true light that enlightens all men and he was coming into the world. He was in the world that had its being through him and the world did not know him. He came to his own domain. And his own people did not accept him. But to all who did accept him, he gave power to become children of God. Word was made flesh, he lived among us, and we saw his glory. a birthday sounds like the traditional opening to a fairy story uh, once upon a time there lived a people who longed and prayed for a king who would free them from the slavery of their enemies he would come from the family of the great king David whose city was now no more than a shanty town Bethlehem and strange things were told about his birth his mother was a young girl from Nazareth and an angel appeared to her and told her that God wanted her to be the mother of his son. And simple shepherds came in saying that angels thronged the heavens and sang to them too when their message, peace on earth, to men who are God's friends. And men came from the east looking for the newborn baby, king of the Jews, and strangest of all, his palace was a stable. It all sounds like folklore, or a setting for a Cinderella type story and is it true and is it true this most tremendous tale of all seen in a stained glass windows you a baby in an ox's stall the maker of the stars and sea become a child from me 
today we believe that we are celebrating not only the birthday of this baby but the birthday of you who are viewing of all Christians everywhere if we do not believe this then we have no reason to celebrate except to use Christmas as a few days break during the winter time and the heavily laden dinner table and all the fun and frivolity and the silly things we do at Christmas will soon give way to the harsh reality and it ill become cynics who must face the future and a bleak one. The generous do-gooder at Christmas too often becomes the hard-headed businessman whose personal struggles for survival and financial gain seem to be the only motives in his life. The physical darkness we may suffer in the next few weeks is but the outward sign of the great struggle between the powers, the employer, the employee and the government engaged in endless discussions. But isn't Christmas a time for forgetting all our troubles and engaging in fantasy? Forgetting. I believe that Christmas is a time for remembering what Christmas is all about. And what is its message? It's very simple and wonderful. The message is this. God loves you who are viewing and even me. He loves each one of us. That is why he sent his son on earth to become a baby. There is no doubt that Jesus was a real man and his birth in historical fact. St. Paul tells us to the Philippians, when he writes to them in the second chapter, talking of Jesus, his state was divine, yet he did not cling to his equality with God, but emptied himself to assume the condition of a slave and become as all men are. In this baby, we find the rebirth of every man who comes into this world. You see, Christ makes it possible for you to share his life with the Father. Christ makes it possible to, for you to share the very life of God himself. For in his humanity, he is linked with you and me. And in his divinity, we find the way back to the Father. As you saw in the mind, the boy who played the part of Christ held a lighted candle in his hand. That was a sign of the light which God meant him to bring into this world. And the light of Christ overcomes the darkness and to all who receive it, there is given the power to become the children of God. We believe that Christ's life was the light of men which gives meaning to our lives and helps us to see beyond death. You see, Christ was born to rise again and to die and so destroy death forever. Dare we believe this? Dare we believe in this age of cynicism that we were born to live forever? Well, those of you who are viewing, if you are lonely today because you remember that last Christmas a loved one shared your Christmas table, then perhaps this little poem may help you. The days, the years, the hours, are they a quagmire sucking us from birth into inevitable death? Or could they lead step by step into eternity? Has God, or the nothing that set creation going, planned this tragic mockery, this mad charade of going down to death is all nothing, and in the end, nothing, all. The birth and the resurrection of this unique person form the cornerstone of our faith. Death no longer separates us from those we love if we really believe that Jesus, and he is, the giver of life without end, to all who believe in him. The joyful celebrations in our homes today highlight the plight of those less fortunate than ourselves. 
Today we think of those who have no friends, no homes, no family circle to remember them. And in them we see the Christ who was homeless at Bethlehem. And we find a place for them in our hearts today and every day. Because every day is Christmas Day. You see, let's face it, there's no easy way out. We will never find happiness if we look for it for ourselves. It is only when we bring happiness to others that we catch a glimpse of the God peeping through in the lives of those whom we help. For it is in giving ourselves to others completely that we find the Christmas spirit. God gives Christ to all of us to be our king and our leader. And so then, if Christmas is only a fairy story, by all means celebrate it with all the joy and the frivolity possible, for the tinsel will soon disappear and tomorrow will bring back the harsh reality. But the Christmas story is true. And if we do really believe that once upon a birthday, in a stable in Bethlehem, there was born a baby who was a king of eternal life, who brought us back into his kingdom, then we will discover the meaning of Christmas and of life. Together we profess our faith. I believe in one God. for the congregation to pray for special intentions and they'll be led in this act of worship by Canon George Collins who's parish priest of St. Robert's, Harrogate. The Lord be with you. And also with you. O oh God, our Heavenly Father, as we celebrate the birthday of Jesus Christ, your only Son, we ask you in his name for all those things of which we stand in need. Lord, you knew what it was like to be homeless. Give your comfort and strength to those who are lonely and unhappy this Christmas because they have no home. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. We pray, especially at Christmas, for peace throughout the world. Help the world's leaders to resolve wisely the problems of their troubled lands. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. Bless all those this Christmas who are far from home and those they love. Grant our families and friends happiness wherever they may be as we all celebrate the birth of Christ today. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. Help us to remember on this day of joy and peace all those for whom the future is bleak and frightening. Grant them, we beg you, 
relief from their worries and fill their hearts with faith and hope in your goodness and protection. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. Let us commend ourselves and all God's people to the prayers of our Blessed Lady, the Mother of Jesus Christ. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou most women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we have offered you our prayers, our petition. If it be your holy will, may they be answered through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen.
blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation. Through your goodness we have this bread to offer, which earth has given and human hands have made. It will become for us the bread of life. By the mystery of this water and wine, may we come to share in the divinity of Christ, who humbled himself to share in our humanity. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation. Through your goodness we have this wine to offer. Fruit of the vine and work of human hands, it will become our spiritual drink. Yes, Lord, Lord God, we ask you to accept us and be pleased with the sacrifice we offer you with humble and contrite hearts. Lord, wash away my iniquity and cleanse me from my sin. Pray, brothers and sisters, that your sacrifice and mine may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice in your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all our church. Help us, Lord, to offer our gifts with a deeper sense of worship on this feast of your son's birth, so that the mystery of his presence under the appearances of bread and wine, may make us more aware of your love for us through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us lift up our hearts. We have raised them up to the Lord. Give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and fitting. It is indeed right and fitting that heaven and earth should praise you, O God. Through the mystery of the world made flesh. There has dawned upon the earth the new light of your glory. And as we see him who is God made visible, we are moved to love what is unseen. And therefore, Lord, we praise you with all the angels and saints as we joyfully proclaim. of all holiness. Let your spirit come upon these gifts to make them holy so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. Before he was given up to death, a death he freely accepted, he took bread and gave you thanks. He broke the bread, gave it to his disciples and said, Take this, all of you, and eat it. This is my body, which will be given up for you.
When supper was ended, he took the cup. Again, he gave you thanks and praise. He gave the cup to his disciples and said, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. This is the cup of my blood, the blood of the new and everlasting covenant. It will be shed for you and for all men so that sins may be forgiven. Do this in memory of me. Let us proclaim the mystery of death and resurrection we offer you father this life-giving bread this saving cup we thank you for counting us worthy to stand in your presence and serve you may all of us who share in the body and blood of christ be brought together in unity by the holy spirit lord remember your church throughout the world make us grow in love together with paul our pope william and gerald our bishop and all the clergy. Remember our brothers and sisters who have gone to their rest in the hope of rising again. Bring them and all the departed into the light of your presence. Have mercy on us all. Make us worthy to share eternal life with Mary, the Virgin Mother of God, with the Apostles, and with all the saints who've done your will throughout the ages. May we praise you in union with them and give you glory through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, with him, in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, forever and with confidence to the Father in the words our Savior gave us. Jesus Christ. 
Christ, you said to your apostles, I leave you peace, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and grant us the peace and unity of your kingdom, where you live forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. This is the Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world. Happy are those who are called to his succor. Lord, I am not worthy to receive you, but only stay the word, and I shall be healed. Father, Jesus Christ, amen.
receive the blessing we remember that every day is Christmas Day because once upon a birthday Christ became man for every man. Let us pray. Lord we thank you for the peace and the goodwill that has been with us this morning and grant that it may remain with us all the days of our lives through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. The Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Mass is ended. Go in peace. Thank you, Jesus.